purpose in life is to serve others. Throughout a rich and meaningful life, wherever he found himself, whatever responsibilities he was given, and they were many, he was bound by a determination to serve others as he served his movement. He had no need for riches. He had no need for recognition. His only need was to break the shackles of the oppressed, to feed, to house, and comfort those who had nothing. His only need was to forge unity where there was division, to bring calm where there was chaos, and to promote understanding where there was intolerance. His only need was to liberate his people from the bondage of apartheid and the enduring tyranny of poverty. Mendim Simang was one of a remarkable generation of freedom fighters, a generation whose deeds will reverberate across the ages. It was the generation that transformed the National Liberation Movement and changed the course of our struggle, a generation that endured hardships in exile, in prison, banishment, torture, as well as death. It was a generation that not only held the Liberation Movement together as the forces of apartheid sought to dismember and to liquidate it. But they are a venerable generation which built the ANC into a formidable mass movement at the head of a global campaign for a democratic South Africa. It was this generation that was prominent among those who led the country to democracy and freedom. Today, as we mourn the passing of one of the effective leaders of that generation, it would be a mistake to relegate them to history. Certainly, most of the members of that generation may have exited the political stage but the principles they fought for, the values they lived by, and the means by which they sought their objectives still find resonance at this moment in our history. As we confront new and daunting challenges, as we attend to the erosion of the revolutionary morality that long defined their contribution and our struggle, we must draw strength and inspiration as well as guidance from the deeds of these actors, of these leaders. The time for leaders like Comrade Mendim Simang has not passed. It has barely begun. The material temptations of political office have never been greater than they are today. As our people have realized, and as our movement has acknowledged, one of the most defining values of our movement is to serve the people of South Africa and not to advance private interests. There is no space or place in this value system to undermine the institutions of our young democracy, to subvert the rule of law, and to advance one's own sectional interests. It is at precisely this moment that we need leaders, cadres, public servants, and business people of the caliber of Mendim Simang. We need people who, like him, are truly selfless 
in their service to our people. We need people like him with an abiding honesty and an essential integrity. For 10 years, Uncle Mendim Simang served as the Treasurer General of the African National Congress, a position more difficult and more hazardous than any other in the movement. If you were to ask Kabazela, TG, Dr. Zuelim Kize, he'll confirm this. In that time, he was scrupulous in his determination that not one cent should go missing, that no resources meant for the transformational programs of the organization should be misappropriated or wasted. I used to think that Madiba was simply the best fundraiser the ANC had ever produced until I saw Comrade Mendy at work as the Treasurer General of the African National Congress. <laughs> Possibly apart from T.G. Ngobi, he was the most formidable. I know that Treasurer General Zuelim Kize and Paul Mashatile are seeking to follow in Comrade Mandy's footsteps. And I hope that the notes that he left behind will be informative to them as they carry on, especially Treasurer General Paul Mashatile as he carries on with his job. Mendim Simang was an envoy of freedom. As the chief rep of the ANC in the United Kingdom, he was a dedicated and capable advocate for the cause of the South African people. Especially when faced with hostile opinion, he sought very patiently and with deliberate care to explain the positions of the African National Congress. He was not one to dismiss others because their views may be reactionary or ill-informed or differ with his views. He sought to persuade them, understanding that it was the responsibility of his revolutionary movement to win to its cause the broadest possible range of social, social forces. But that was not the only reason. He sought to persuade others because he was not prepared to give up on another human being. He was driven by a firm conviction that every person has the capacity to do good, to see sense, to make a meaningful contribution to society. He had a remarkable ability to see beyond their prejudice, their anger, their, fra their frailties, and to recognize their essential beings. For that, he was much loved and widely admired. When he returned to London, this time as the Democratic South Africa's first High Commissioner to the Court of St. James, he did so with a completely different mandate, but employed many of the same methods. While it is certainly true that he no longer organized protests outside South Africa House, he used his good offices within the building to advance the cause of a free and democratic South Africa. He argued with great eloquence and conviction that while it was true that the South African people had achieved the overthrow of apartheid and established a democratic state, the legacy of centuries of dispossession and exploitation endured. He sought the support of the British government and people, and indeed, 
the broader international community for the reconstruction of South Africa, for the growth and transformation of its economy, and for the empowerment of its people through skills and jobs. Over two decades later, these remain the most important tasks that we as a nation must still undertake. We must attend to these tasks with the same vigor and application that Uncle Mendim Simang did. We must seek, as he always did, to build consensus on the measures we must necessarily take to transform the economy and our society as well. We must confront as he would have, the difficult choices that need to be made to turn around our economy that has faltered and to fix the public institutions that have been weakened in recent years. We must retain, as he would have, our focus on the overriding task to create jobs, to tackle poverty, and to reduce inequality. We must forge a social compact that is founded on the incontrovertible reality that none of us can prosper unless all of us prosper. We must forge a social compact that recognizes the enormity of the challenges ahead of us and that these challenges require that we all pull in the same direction. That the challenges that we face are not only the challenges of the government or a particular section of society, but they are a collective challenge. This is what Mendim Simang was good at. Building bridges, forging alliances, and resolving differences. That is why we say that the time for leaders like Uncle Mendim Simang has not passed. He was a person of great modesty and dignity. He treated others with respect, was moderate in demeanor, and measured in his address. These may be commendable pers personality traits, but they are also profoundly political. They are among the qualities that we, sh we should seek in every revolutionary. One cannot be a revolutionary if one does not respect others. One cannot be a revolutionary if one is intolerant of other people's views or if insult and invective are the only means of persuasion one can marshal. Those who worked with Uncle Mandy remember both very fondly and sometimes with frustration how meticulous he was. They recall his commitment to proper syntax and correct spelling and his ability to debate the placement of a comma. And those possibly who had the privilege of playing Scrabble with him, which I also love, would possibly have known that he had great prowess even in a game of Scrabble. This was a sign not only of a sound education, but also of a rigorous discipline that extended from the writing of a letter to the prosecution of the struggle. But Uncle Mendy had another valuable attribute, being a teacher and molding young people. Many amongst us would testify to having been mentored and tutored by our veteran. But I guess he perhaps did the most important tutoring and mentoring
to his grandsons in the final days of his life as he allowed the boys to show up and to grow up at his bedside. My sister here, Africa Msimang, tells that he provided them with an opportunity to learn that compassion and caring are for the very strong. Such traits do not come to the weak and the self-absorbed. She says that, and I quote, dad provided the boys with lessons that no classroom or textbooks can teach. It has been a pleasure as a mother, she says, to watch the boys wo work voluntarily on schedule to care for the Amkulu. They bathed him themselves. They fed him themselves and indeed made the home nurse unnecessary. Even the hospital staff allowed them to set up their working space in his ward as they continued doing their own work. The nurses were amused by dad's regular wake up mantra, where are the boys, he would always say. These boys were given an opportunity to learn what compassion means. And it was a lesson which Uncle Mendy passed on to them involuntarily and possibly not being so aware that he was teaching them a lesson of a lifetime. This is what they will carry with them throughout their lives. These boys were even prepared to skip the recent global festival where Beyonce appeared. They were prepared to even give that up, to hold the Amkulu's hand as they did. Mjele decided to go into solitude that afternoon to write a poem as we had that he could read his, to his grandfather before the family was called in that evening. Read it, he did. Kaya, Mdeni, Mjele, and Nati, you have been blessed to have been given your most important lesson with reality to face the world with compassion and courage. Like you, we were also fortunate to have learned a great deal from this great human being. Like many of his generation, Mandim Simang paid a heavy price for his commitment to the struggle. The nation owes his family a debt of gratitude for the sacrifices they made and the absences that they endured. We extend to the family our deepest condolences for their sad loss and their selfless sacrifice of giving up their parental claim to their father, grandfather, brother, and the patriarch to the service of the people of South Africa. The family, like all of us, assume a great responsibility to carry forward his legacy, characterized by a deep sense of loyalty, commitment, love, and selflessness to all the people of our country, especially the poor. Mendim Simang, stalwart of our movement, giant of our struggle, unassuming hero of our people is no more. As we mourn his passing, we commend and we celebrate a life lived in the service of others. As we bid him farewell, we repeat that the time for leaders like Mendim Simang has not passed. In his memory, let us pledge, as our forebears did in Cliptown, that we will strive together, sparing neither strength nor courage, 
until we reach our goal as a united, free and prosperous South Africa. May his soul rest in peace. May his abundant legacy endure. Hambagase, Comrade Mendy, Kawe Lama I thank you.